All right. Um, so the Gene Keys, this is the golden path. Uh, I call it the cosmic golden path. And basically this is, it's using the same information as the human design chart. Um, basically it's using the same data, the same astrology, you know, as, as human design. And, you know, by the way, the Gene Keys, you know, was created by Richard Rudd, who was kind of this kind of disciple of Ra Uhu, you know, the founder of, uh, of human design. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of branched off, um, you know, back in the early 2000s and came up with his own thing, the Gene Keys after, you know, contemplating the I Ching and stuff like that a lot. And, um, you know, I really love the Gene Keys book. I highly recommend that you, you read it. And basically he created this thing called the Golden Path, um, which has a structure kind of similar, in fact, to the human design body graph. And all of this really is based on the Kabbalah, the tree of life. Um, you know, you can kind of see that in the center here where we've got all the spheres, you know, basically that is very similar to the structure of the Kabbalah, which, you know, is supposedly based on, you know, the uh, human anatomy and all that. Um, anyways, um, but so basically every planet is going to correspond to a sphere um like for example life's work at the top which is where we will start corresponds to your personality sun which for you is the 64 um and uh so on and so forth um and then you know the evolution the sphere of the evolution corresponds to your uh personality earth and we'll see as we go through this that you know the names are very significant they're not given arbitrarily and they follow logically from what uh which planet we're talking about um so uh that's uh, what the spheres mean you know basically corresponding to a different area of your life um and each sphere is also going to have associated with it um, several words that come from the hexagram and the line number. So, for example, your life's work is going to be um, the teacher. We see that your son is the 64.6. And um, here, over here, we see your life's work is the teacher confusion, imagination, illumination. So the first word, the teacher, comes from the line. Um, so you've got the sixth line, personality, sun. Uh, and the other words, the three uh, words, the shadow, the gift, and then the city, which as you know from the gene keys are these different frequencies of consciousness, which are reflected in these different words. Um, of the 64, the 64th hexagram. So the 64, the shadow is confusion. The gift is imagination. The city is illumination. So this theme of the 64, we can kind of get a better idea of what it's really talking about when we look at these words side by side with the name of the hexagram, for example, and some things from the I Ching. Um, for example, the 64, as we talked a, a little bit about last time, I think, is the last hexagram of the entire I Ching before completion, before completion. What is the completion is talking about? It's talking about freeing the true self from basically the ego's dominance, which is this mental, this kind of false mental construct that has kind of been um, engendered in basically the whole human race um, and basically creates this kind of parallel reality. This is according to the cosmic I Ching. Um, basically, we are living in a parallel reality according to the, to the I Ching, um, which is separate from the true cosmic reality. And what creates that is, um, you know, basically the false use of language which creates this kind of mental, false mental construct call, it calls the ego, which is basically like a very advanced computer program. Um, it's not conscious. It, it's basically all of our unconscious conditioning and programming, you know, that we've grown up with, that we have been literally programmed um, with, for example, false words like guilt. Uh, according to the I Ching, guilt is not a thing. It's not a thing in the cosmic reality. Nevertheless, 
uh, we've all felt guilty <laughs> uh, for something probably. And, um, but the thing is that wouldn't exist without the word itself guilt. Um, you know, normally when we hear a word, we think it must correspond to something real, to something that actually exists. You know, that's the default, uh, you know, that our minds are kind of programmed to, you know, take in words and, and take in their essence. Um, but for example, things like this word guilt, um, it doesn't exist uh, in the cosmic reality. But nevertheless, through creating the word guilt, we humans have made that a part of our reality, you know, and that, you know, it, it's the separation that then ensues. Um, because as long as you're feeling guilty, you can't be a part of the cosmic reality, you know, because that's the nature of guilt. It kind of suppresses, um, yeah, your, your, your true self uh, in many ways. Anyways, um, so this completion that the I Ching is talking about is freeing the true self, um, which to me means that we... Um, return inwardly to our original cosmic programming, uh, which is there, which is the true self, but which may be very much suppressed inwardly. Um, and, you know, the idea is that the more and more we become our, we, we go back to being our true self, the more and more we are in harmony with the cosmos and the more and more we, um, yeah, get on the track to fulfilling our true destiny. You know, there is no other destiny. There is only our true cosmic destiny. You know, no matter what we may believe in the parallel reality. Uh, you know, like, for example, you know, we want to be a specific thing, you know, uh, a career or, or something like that. But, you know, that is all kind of part of the, uh, you know, the assigned, um, you know, uh, matrix of, different things that people can be uh which you know don't necessarily correspond to to truth so that's basically how we're reading this um is uh each of these planets corresponds to a sphere and we'll look at what each of them means as we go through it so your life's work let's start with, let's start there so the life's work is at the top the top sphere so we kind of begin there um and by the way, in a way, we're kind of going through this in a way backwards because the life's work, it's actually like the last thing that is that comes that is, you know, as far as um, it's the most outermost thing. It's the outermost thing that, uh, you know, we can see or, or feel um, in, you know, our presence or in another person's presence. So. The life's work, it comes from the sun, right? The personality sun. And just as, as the sun shines, you know, uh, brightly, so your life's work is something that can't really be suppressed. You know, one way or another, you're going to wind up doing something involving your life's work, um, as outlined, you know, in in the gene keys because it's just it's your son it's so um you know bright and i mean maybe you could suppress it for a long time and i'm sure many people have done that but you know the, the point is it's it's such a central thing it's such a um you know powerful thing that uh you know you, it's going to be easy to to notice i suppose um so for you that is being some kind of teacher the teacher, um, which comes from the sixth line, the 64.6. Um, so the sixth line, as we talked about, is kind of this very broad, this very, uh, you know, setting on the roof of the house, right? Um, and eventually it's going to be this kind of role model. Um, and that's, and, you know, because you've learned so many things, so many lessons throughout your life, uh, you know, you're going to be able to embody that um, and become some kind of a teacher. You know, that's what it kind of naturally lends itself to. You know, if you've got all this wisdom and knowledge, then, you know, eventually you're going to uh, be called. You're going to be called to be some kind of teacher. Um, and uh, teaching what? Confusion, imagination, illumination. So we kind of string the words together and see what that gives us. So teaching teaching uh what 
Um, illumination. Illumination is setting things, uh, seeing things clearly. Um, confusion is, you know, kind of the situation we're in, we're in right now on a world level. Nobody really knows what's going on. Um, people are confused about their lives. Uh, you know, nobody's really being their true self um, because we've got all these false ideas flowing around in our, in our heads about who we are and who we should be. Um, which are not true. Um, and the thing is, those words and those, you know, languages, um, they, they do influence people subconsciously, unconsciously. That's what the ego is, this kind of unconscious influence program that um, causes us in a way to, yeah, even act against our will, you know, if there are, um, you know, uh, through what the I Ching calls a spell, and a spell is created when we say words in a certain way um, that describe, uh, you know, it kind of puts a fence around our thoughts. Um, so like, you know, for example, I should be a plumber. You know, maybe someone around there uh, out there is believing that I, I have to be a plumber. The words I have to be a plumber puts that person under a spell where, um, you know, then literally their mind, it, it doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere else. You know, it's just stuck on that all day long, uh, <laughs> you know? Um, so illumination, <laughs> it's the end of the gene keys. It's the end of the I Ching. Um, and yeah, it, it's really about, you know, victory over the ego. I mean, that's what, uh, that's what it's about. That's where the victory occurs in the last three hex, three lines of the 64. Um, which all that means is going back to who you always were, right? That's all that means. It's not like an upward ascent or some kind of ascension. No, that's, uh, that's really the ego talking. No, it's going back to who you originally were. The fact is that everyone's original kind of cosmic image or programming has been overwritten by this false mental programming that um, separates us from our feelings, from our inner truth, and causes us to live in a totally mind-created reality, basically. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, and yeah, you've got the 45 as well. You know, that's why I'm so excited to give you a reading because, you know, I can tell that you're going to um, be someone who has a lot of knowledge who people are really going to want to come to, to, to potentially learn about some of this stuff. Um, and uh, the brand, the, uh, the brand you see here is uh, kind of, uh, it's also appears kind of side by side with the life's work um, because the brand is also the personality sun, um, but it's kind of part of a, later sequence see there's uh, several sequences here which i don't have them colored so it might be difficult to understand at first but basically we have the activation sequence which is looks like a z the life's work to the evolution to the radiance and then to the purpose that's basically one sequence and then we have the venus sequence which starts at the purpose and then kind of takes this zigzag path up to the core wound slash vocation, and then we turn it into the pearl sequence, which is about our um, how we uh, uh, work in business and stuff like that, and how we can make money. <laughs> and and that last uh, sequence is the core wound culture, and then the brand, and then the pearl. So really, the brand is part of that latter pearl sequence talking about business and, you know, how you should brand yourself, that kind of thing. Um, so that's what I mean by brand. Um, how should you brand yourself? How should, how should you brand what you're selling or what you are offering people, you know, just in terms of your life, you know, just in terms of who you are. And that is vision, 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 vision for the sixth line. Um, yeah, you're going to have this um incredible vision really it may not make a lot of sense it may not be very clear right now but it is a vision uh, because the sixth line is very focused on the future 
you know, more so than any of the other lines. You know, you're always thinking about the future. You're, you're thinking about what could potentially go wrong, you know, before you decide to do something or, you know, uh, maybe if you uh, want to have kids, maybe or you did have kids, maybe you'd be thinking something like, how could I raise my kids in the world like this, you know, or something like that. You know, it's really so you're always kind of planning for the future in a way. Um, thinking of the future. So that lends itself to having this vision, you know, which goes in hand in hand with teaching and education. So, you know, um, that's the brand, uh, which I guess is pretty obvious from, you know, being the teacher. But um, yeah, uh, you know, the emphasis is on the vision. Um, the challenge slash evolution. So, there are also these different path, paths, right? So um, from the life's work to the sphere of evolution, we see that's the pathway of challenge. And um, it's called that because this sphere of your evolution comes from the personality Earth, the 63. Now, the sun and Earth are opposed to one another. They are opposites they're complements but you know they're 180 degrees across each other on the zodiac so it's an opposition so in a way your earth energy is the opposite of the sun energy um, in terms of creating a perfect balance now in the world today that may feel like a challenge it may feel like a challenge to um, you know, have your earth where it is because in a way it is that opposite energy. So it may feel like a challenge and in a way it is because it's designed to help you evolve and, you know, challenge, a challenge, a real challenge can help one to do that. Um, so your challenge evolution is the 63 after completion, after completion. How do we deal with things after? How does any of this endure like what are the conditions for actually making something work and and it stays good i mean you may yeah i i sense that maybe you have all of these you know great ideas about things but then when it comes to you know the practical aspect the um you know how does it survive long term then it's like question mark question mark question mark going on you know you you you, you those are like blanks that you know, you're going to fill in eventually, but it's not entirely clear. It's not entirely clear because this is your challenge slash evolution. Education and surrender. Education and surrender. Doubt, inquiry, truth. So I always like to look at the shadow first because in a way, in our reality, that is the most uh, close to home. You know, it's the one we can most identify with because there's so many shadows in the world. Um, in a way, it is the shadows of the Gene Keys that create the parallel reality itself, the words themselves. Um, so doubt, doubt is the shadow of the 63. Doubting if it's really possible, you know, if it can really work. Um, you know, how can this really work? I don't know, I need to figure it out, you know. It's, it's, it's not clear. Um, and so, yeah, inquiry and truth. Um, so your earth, your challenge, and by the way, the earth energy, I like to think of it as what you keep coming back to. You keep coming back to it, and it is this strong, stable energy for you. Um, but it's something like almost automatic. You know, it feels almost automatic, and it's not something you really think about too, too much. Um, doubt, inquiry, truth. So, you know, you're always um, asking questions. You know, you're always wanting to find the truth, really. That is kind of your rock. You know, the earth is like this rock, um, this dependable force that, uh, you know, doesn't move or it's always there. It's always there. Um, and, uh, education and surrender. So surrendering to truth, surrendering to this process of, you know, okay, I may not know all the answers, but 
you know, I can figure it out. It will come to me eventually through inquiry, through continuing to work at it, you know, um, through um, through saying no to doubt in a way. You know, we have to say no to all of the shadows um, and not really think about them too much, you know, to be honest, um, because thinking about something does, you know, put that into your consciousness, which then can manifest as, you know, the reality. So doubt inquiry truth um yeah so in a way surrendering to this and the sixth line you know it has a difficulty it has some difficulty with the surrendering business you know with the <laughs> you know just just take being able to uh you know trust that everything's gonna gonna come eventually i i guess the problem with the sixth line and uh trust slash doubt is that you know, for, for a six line, it's like they really have to see the whole picture, uh, you know, before you commit to it, before you really jump into it. You know, you have to see how everything works out. Everything works out. OK, and then I can jump into it. You know, then I can really believe it, um, you know. But, uh, for example, I don't know, like a, uh, a third line, for example, which the sixth line is half you know, through the first 30 years, I don't know, maybe they can not have so much difficulty with it because they just keep going. They just keep going, you know, uh, and, and just try things automatically, experiment, you know, trial and error. Um, so maybe that would be, I don't know, at least more straightforward in a way. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that is kind of the issue there so after the evolution after your after your personality sun and earth 64 63 we kind of jump through the um path of breakthrough here in the center and we go to the unconscious to the radiance which is the unconscious sun the design sun so that's why it's called the path of breakthrough breaking through the conscious to the unconscious and, uh, you know, kind of discovering that that's even a thing. Um, you know, so the radiance, it's, uh, what you are unconsciously radiating. It's your design sun. So it's very much involved with the body, um, with presence, with your uh, physical presence. And it's what others are going to be looking at. You know, that's what they can see kind of right away. Um, but it's unconscious within yourself. It's not mental. It's not, uh, it's visible. It's visible. Your design, everything on the design side is going to be something visible. Um, something that corresponds to your nature, right? As opposed to your consciousness. That's the fundamental duality here. We've got consciousness the first hexagram and nature, the second hexagram. So it's kind of like, that's the, the Tai Chi symbol, you know, in the I Ching, you know, the two, you know, the figure eight or, or, or all those symbols that, that mean the same thing, basically. Um, that's the fundamental duality of reality, really, you know, the two sides of the coin. Um, so we have invisible consciousness and visible form or nature. Um, so this is the visible side. And it's the radiance, you know, it's, it's visible. Um, and that's the 45, the 45, which, as you may remember, I'm a 45 myself on the personality side, but you've got it on the design side. So maybe it's interesting to see how those kind of contrast there. Um, and your radiance is marriage, marriage, the 45 marriage. <laughs> um, no, it doesn't mean necessarily, uh, you know, of course, real marriage to like a woman or some something no it can it can be a marriage in terms of you know um yeah sticking with something uh, always having a certain uh i don't know maybe a system of ideas that that you kind of rely on um that it makes you feel more comfortable to just live your everyday life you know knowing that you've kind of worked uh, this thing out you know, and, and you're always checking with it, um, you know, something that you're always kind of relying and, and depending on and, and interacting with. Um, 
so that kind of marriage, it, it makes you feel, um, yeah, like I, I myself have have the marriage radiance as well. I'm an unconscious second line myself. And uh, yeah, I can tell you certain things that if I have to go without them, uh, you know, it makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, uh, certain routines that I have or, um, you know, for me, uh, I see my second line marriage being, you know, cosmic human design. Uh, and, and it feels like I'm always kind of interacting with it. I'm always kind of trying to improve it, you know, um, that kind of thing. And for you, the marriage is going to be about the 45. So dominant synergy communion marriage to what yeah some so synergy like looking at the synergies between things you know I, you're probably very good at, at analysis you know at, at looking at how the parts interconnect uh you know for these different systems you can kind of see clearly um and realize things that others uh, can't quite grasp because you are looking at the synergy which is this kind of unpredictable energy, you know? People think they understand synergy, but synergy really is this kind of wild energy that um, can vary a lot, you know? Like, for example, when two things come together, um, they could create, you know, a, a small explosion, but if you changed one thing about one of the elements, then it could create a massive, massive explosion, you know? And you're the one who can recognize that, who can recognize those small details and grasp the synergy, um, you know, which is what the 45 really is all about, seeing the whole rather than just the parts. Um, and yeah, the the city is communion. Communion with what? God, of course. You know, that's what it has to be. That's what it has to be. That's what it has to be talking about. The whole, um, so just as, you know, we have kind of this aggregate consciousness made up of the many part, the many cells within our bodies, so does the cosmos, the universe as a whole, have an aggregate consciousness that sometimes we call God, um, you know, the consciousness of the whole, uh, which we can be in communion, communication with, um, you know, really at all times, you know, if, if we're being correct, you know, if we're being correct within ourselves, then we have access to the whole, to the knowledge of the whole. Uh, which is, of course, all going to be invisible. <laughs> but um, yeah, so so for your radiance, you know, it's not only describing what you um, radiate, but also what you need within your immediate physical surroundings in a way. Um, so yeah, this kind of uh, dominant synergy communion, you know, maybe at the shadow level, maybe sometimes throughout your life, you tried to, you, you thought that you needed to, kind of have this dominance, you know, control things basically to, to get things done. And maybe that was close to you, but you know, uh, that is the same kind of principle. The dominance is just the shadow of communion where you can see the whole still, but, but instead of trusting, you're kind of dominating, 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 you know, uh, basically, yeah. Replacing God with yourself, um, in a way. That is dominance. Um, yeah, and then synergy, communion. So, yeah, really, literally, this is for you having God close to your heart at all times. That's your radiance. Um, <laughs> I don't mean God in a grandiose way, you know. I just mean it, you know, as consciousness, you know, the consciousness of the whole. Um purpose so then we go into the purpose down here and this is the pathway of core stability it's called core stability because this connects the design sun to the design earth which is the foundation the design earth is the earth of your body so it's the very physical um most physical uh level of your being really and so uh metaphorically we can say that if this uh, sphere is off balance, then your entire being is going to feel kind of off balance as well. And that's why it's called the purpose, because 
purpose means that something where all the energies are directed towards. I mean, so in a way, all your energies have to eventually be directed towards the purpose or else everything's going to unravel. Um, and so um, it also tells us something about that very physical bodily um, kind of correspondence, which in your case is posture, posture. Um, uh, and just to give you an idea of the, the different things that it could be, for example, the third line would be movement. It would be movement. Uh, the fourth line would be rhythm, you know. Uh, so the second line here is posture, posture. Um, the first line would be the bone. You know, so the second line is kind of the posture, you know, how do we, um, how do we uh, approach things? How do you approach a situation? Because that's going to determine the result for you uniquely. You know, it may not for the other lines, but for the second line, how you approach something, your, your general posture, which involves a lot of different elements, right? Um, you know, uh, of your physical. Um, specifically the, well, the word, in, so the word in brackets here, it's just kind of, I guess, clarifying what it means by posture. And, um, like for example, uh, the fourth line, which was, um, uh, you know, rhythm, the parentheses is breath, breath. Um, and, and yeah, the first line was physicality and, and bones was, would be what is in the bracket. So really we're talking about fluids here because the fluid system is the system that is one up from basically the skeletal system, uh, which was the first line. So this is the second line. So it's about this kind of fluid, uh, system that we have going on here, um, which includes, uh, you know, uh, like our, for example, um, like kidneys, the kidney elimination rate. And um, if, it, uh, if that is what it's supposed to be, you know, that's going to tell us something about our fluid level. Uh, is it correct? Um, are, are we eating too much salt? You know, things like that are, you know, the fluid. So it's more, the, it's not really talking about the blood, Um you know, that's more of the third line talking about the blood, but the second line, the posture, the fluids. Um, basically, I like to, it is a bit confusing. I, I, this, you know, getting your head around what exactly this means, but I like to think of it as how you approach things. Like, that is critical. Uh, do you go into it with an attitude of, you know, trust or is it something else? Um, and in this case, we're talking about the 26, the 26.2, um, which is the pride, artfulness, invisibility. So this is the taming power of the great, um, which is, yeah, probably the most skillful slash best at doing something, at doing whatever it is they're doing. You know, that's the kind of desire of the 26 to be the best. Um, and it will be, it will be the best. It can be the best. Um, and it knows it, <laughs> it knows it. So that at the shadow that turns into pride, it turns into pride because along with that comes the ego desire to be recognized, to be recognized for being great. Um, you know, which is not the true really nature of what's going on. That's the ego corruption seeping in. Um, artfulness and invisibility. So this gives us a better idea of what's really talking about. Artfulness, doing something well, you know, is almost like an art. You know, it's more than good. It's more than perfect. It it's a, has a kind of magical quality to it as well. And then at the city, it's just absolutely invisible. It's everywhere, you know. And this is, of course, talking about the perfection of God once again. Uh, you know, God works invisibly um, and, and of consciousness in general. So um, and the, the key difference is that at the city no longer cares about being recognized. That is what, um, 
you know, that's the ego trap, basically. Um, so, yeah, how do you approach things? Do you approach it with an attitude of pride or, you know, just uh, an attitude of I'm going to do my best and not really care if I get recognized? Um, yeah, so and then, OK, so that's the activation sequence. So from that, we can tell a lot. Right. And, and it's those four I just went over are equivalent to your incarnation cross which was the cross of dominion. People whose interpretation of the past can be impactful, using information to positions of power and authority. And as we talked a bit about the last time, you know, this cross, it's one of the last, you know, it's the last hexagram, the cross of the last hexagram, the last line of the last hexagram. And, it, you know, so we've got the 64 and the 45, which are two of the key, in my view, like, I don't know, cosmic leadership gates, um, you know, as far as what uh, is going to happen with regards to the cosmic and parallel realities. You know, people with this cross, I do believe, are going to play a pivotal role in uh, informing, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, putting out and, and people, uh, you know, coming to them to, to seek out information that has either been suppressed or, you know, hidden uh, for a long, long time. And, um, you know, really getting that stuff clear. Uh, and, and people are going to really be begging for it, I feel. Um, and, and that's why he gives it the name, the Cross of Dominion, using information to assume power, positions of power and authority. I mean, don't worry about the power and authority, you know, maybe, maybe not, but, you know, at the city, that's not really going to matter too much. Um, but yeah, it will tend to lend itself to you being in some kind of, you know, prestigious, not necessarily prestigious, but like uh, very well respected uh, among others, you know, for your uh, ability to interpret things correctly, you know, which is the the thing that has been going wrong this entire time. <laughs> you know, no one's been interpreting things correctly because we've misunderstood the basic nature of reality. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, we have because when you think about it, the modern scientific worldview is uh, it's been going for a long time in this direction of materialism, materialism, you know, the scientific materialism. Um you know, I, I mean, I went to Yale, right, and at and majored in philosophy, and I can tell you that all of the philosophy classes there were pushing this. They were pushing it. You know, you didn't have to seek it out. It came to you. You know, these ideas of scientific materialism, you know, transhumanism, um, those kinds of things, which um, push this, uh, you know, that that physical matter is the basis of reality and, and that's the view that holds true in almost all science today but it's completely the opposite it's really completely the opposite of how things really are and so you can imagine that if people keep going like that for uh, you know a certain amount of time eventually there's going to be some severe repercussions you know maybe not just for people but for the human race as a whole <coughs> you know because to, to totally misunderstand the nature of reality, you know, that's not going to be great. <laughs> you know, you know, we think that the physical matter is the basis of reality, but in fact, consciousness comes first. Conscious, the invisible consciousness of the cosmos and our consciousness, it comes first. And then what we see, the physical reality we see, is a manifestation of that, you know, not the other way around. <laughs> um so yeah that's the 26 um and then we've got um now we go into the venus sequence so this is about relationships and interacting with others and the love <laughs> so um we go from the purpose to the attractor field through the path of the dharma and the dharma means basically the law you know, the, um, the Sanskrit, it's in Sanskrit, it means the law, or basically what um, life has set up for you to experience in this life. 
Um, so if all that is aligned, then you go through the path of the Dharma and it, you know, activate the attractor field, which will bring, you know, kind of brings the Dharma to you, you know, it brings those events into your life, which you're destined to uh, eventually experience. And also, in particular, this fear is dealing with our intimate relationships and what those are like. So we have two words here, a shadow and a gift for the um, attractor field. And the attractor field is based on the unconscious moon. And it's the unconscious moon because the moon is all about ma mag magnetism and attraction. And it's the unconscious because, you know, that is the, bod the body moon. So, uh, you know, physical attraction is going to play a big role. Uh, that's what we're talking about. We're not necessarily talking about like telepathy. You know, we're talking just talking about what comes to you naturally without you having to do anything. And that's the unconscious moon. So the 53.4, um, what is that? It's, um, it's called uh, 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 developing the true self. Actually, that's the name of the hexagram, developing the true self. Um, in the older versions of the I Ching, it's called uh, progressing gradually, you know, kind of like gradual progression. So uh, the idea is that we're progressing. Um, so this kind of, you know, optimism, this kind of like, you know, um, it's gradually improving. It's gradually getting better. You know, that is what you are attracting. Um, and yeah, ideally, you know, your, your, uh, you know, mate or whatnot is going to embody some of those uh, quality, you know, it's going to be attracting the correct person for you. Um, so uh, the first two words here, uh, frigidity slash romance and distant slash intimate. So these are the different ways this um, fourth line, remember the first words are always the line, uh, expresses itself. So the fourth line the shadows are frigidity and, uh, you know, being distant. And the gifts are, you know, romance and intimacy. You know, that's the ideal. That's the ideal, what the fourth line attractor field is wanting. It's what it's bringing in. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and dealing with these uh, specific, um, for example, the shadows will be, dealing with immaturity. So um, frigidity and distance in an intimate relationship for you, they're going to be connected to immaturity, to some kind of notion of immaturity. Maybe person, maybe they're not mature enough. Uh, you know, maybe that's what really turns you off about them. You know, maybe that's what causes you to, you know, just, uh, you know, <laughs> I can't, I can't do this. You know, that is, is if there's some kind of immaturity there. Maybe they don't take things seriously. Um, but at the gift and city, you know, it's about the expansion. It's about constantly getting better, constantly getting better. So you ideally would perhaps possibly need to be with someone who has that kind of attitude, who, you know, has this attitude of growth, you know, our, like our relationships growing. It's always getting better. It's always improving, you know, this kind of just optimistic attitude, you know, this, yeah. Um, and then the superabundance, you know, we can have everything, you know, we can, and you really can, you know, and, and not having your cake and eating it too, you know, but yeah, really, really having the cake and eating it too, I suppose. Um, so yeah, that's the attractor field. Um, and then the path of the karma, um, which basically means work or action um, will lead us to the IQ, the intelligence quotient. <laughs> and it's not, uh, you know, that kind of mathematical definition of IQ in terms of numbers, but rather a qualitative definition of IQ and how our mind thinks, how it works in terms of the different types of consciousness. And um, that comes from the conscious Venus, actually, the conscious Venus. And it's the conscious Venus because, um, you know, uh, Venus is very much related to our sense of values and um, 
you know, what kinds of things we, we like to think about, we like to have around us, you know, our, our sense of aesthetics, our sense of, yeah, what thinks well <laughs> for us, basically, what is beautiful for us to, you know, think about. That's why it is associated with the mind here. And we've got the 31.3. Um, and yeah, let's do the line first, the three. So the third line. So the lines, they again, the lines are um, modif like kind of like modifications of the overall energy. Um, now the 31, it's called uh, mutual influence, mutual influence, um, which is, uh, you know, really a lot about this sense of leadership. Um, and the third line is going to be the flexible mind, the flexible mind. Um, so the 31, arrogance, leadership, humility. Um, so in a way, so, you know, really what it's talking about with the mutual influence is the uh, continuous interplay between yourself and uh, God, basically, uh, the overall consciousness of the cosmos, you know, the whole. Um, which is what we all are, you know, immersed in at all times. So I, so you know, this kind of interchange that that you know that goes between us and the cosmos. That's the mutual influence it's talking about. Um, you know, just as we, you know, the cosmos can influence us, so our own thoughts influence the cosmic response to us. Um, so we can either be very arrogant and assume rather that there's not a mutual influence and have this idea that you know we're completely separate from the cosmos and, and that everything is within this skull physical skull you know that would be arrogance um and uh you know but if we that interplay happen naturally then it's gonna it you know that's gonna manifest as some kind of leadership um because the true leader is the one who is in touch with God all the time, basically. And so they always know the right thing to do. You know, that's true leadership. That's what really makes someone a true leader is when other people, they can just sense this kind of uh, aura around a person that, you know, hey, this guy really must know what he's talking about, you know, um, which of course comes from that kind of, uh, you know, connection there. So, so it's 31.3. Um, Let's see. And that's one of your main channels as well in the um, in the human design chart is this channel of the alpha, the channel of leadership, the 31-7. Um, so you do have, uh, you know, that whole channel there of leadership um, and flexible, the, the third line. You've got the third line. So it's always experimenting, trying out new ideas, not afraid to, you know, um, perhaps admit mistakes or say it was wrong about something, your mind at least, and, and try out new things, you know, um, being flexible, being flexible, being flexible. Now, sometimes we have the word evasive here in the parentheses, and that could be interpreted negatively, but it could also mean that, um, you know, your mind, it's just so, it, it can jump to so many different things you know, it can seem almost evasive to others, um, you know, and in a way, this is kind of a defense mechanism, you know, when, when people are, are asking you perhaps for information, like, for example, they have no right to have, you know, you'd be very good at giving evasive answers, you know, <laughs> like, not, you know, um, and not really, uh, because your mind, it, it, it can jump to so many different things, you know, and some, some that could seem evasive, you know, like, Oh, you know, we're talking about this or, you know, we're really talking about that. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, and I didn't create these words, right? So I would probably create a different word than evasive because to me that doesn't make a ton of sense. I'm just trying to interpret them, them for you as best as I can. And to me that that is what it means, right? You know, the flexible mind, it, you know, it can kind of lead to this kind of evasiveness, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, okay, and then we have the EQ, and this is the path of 
intelligence because these are the two different types of intelligence. We had the IQ and the EQ, the emotional quotient. How do our emotions tend to manifest? And this comes from the conscious Mars. So we've got Mars and Venus here on this uh, path of intelligence. And uh, we've got the 39.5 for uh, the EQ. Now, um, I like to think of the EQ as how you interact with others. And it can either be with through the gift or the shadow, tend to be at least. Um, so you, you tend to either interact with people in terms of you have this kind of great respect for them, you know, and take everything they say very seriously and, and um, you know, uh, very courteous and all that. Or it could be kind of this lack of respect, you know, and uh, and then you're just like not really interested in, in you know, anything, <laughs> anything, anything about, you know, what they are basically. Um, and, you know, that that tends to be through this 39, this 39, um, the provocation, the dynamism, the liberation. So this sense of this dynamic energy in people, um, you know, maybe even a sense of, oh, they're OK with some jokes, even, <laughs> you know, that's one way the 39 likes to uh, likes to. Uh, see who's correct for it or not you know around the dinner table maybe you kind of poke fun at someone and see how they respond well it's either they're either going to react negatively or positively to that and you know that's one way if they react negatively then you know that maybe that person's not really for you they're not really getting it um you know because they don't really have that that spirit you're looking for this certain spirit within a person that can, you know, let you know if, if they're correct for you or not, you know, just in terms of interacting with. That's the provocation. That's the provocation aspect. That's what it means by provocation. You know, provoking someone, you know, like a, a barb or a jab, you know, like, you know, hey, you know, <laughs> that's the provocation that's talking about because it reveals this kind of dynamic energy inside of a person. Um, and, you know, that's the respect uh, coming in. OK, and then we've got the SQ here, which is directly in the center. So you know right away the SQ is going to have a huge impact. It's going to be tremendously important for, for your whole life really because it's right in the center right in the heart of your being and that's why it's the sq the spiritual quotient which you know i like to think of as what uh, more than anything you need for your spirit your sense of self to feel okay in the world and for you that's some sense of certainty certainty and that is comes from the unconscious venus the unconscious Venus. So the unconscious Venus is the SQ. And it's the 23.1. And when you think about it, it makes sense because our unconscious Venus is, you know, our unconscious, you know, sense of values and um, comfort and, and, and what we need uh, to, for our physical well-being, you know. And, and that, so that's why it's the Venus, basically. The 23.1. Um, and the first line, that's the certainty, rhythm and routine. You know, if your routine gets too disrupted, it, you know, it's like, it's difficult. It, it becomes difficult. You know, uh, things need to be a certain way for you. Um, you know, you have kind of have a place for everything and it all makes sense and everything's efficient. Um, yeah. And you kind of get into this good rhythm after a while of, establishing that you know and then everything makes sense everything goes together but if it's not like that I'll, you know it's like what is going on um and everything seems really complex uh at the shadow you know that's another way to interpret these is you know like the first words if it's the shadow or you don't have it then it's like it's because of the shadow that shadow in your life complexity so if there's a lot of complexity in your life, 
it's going to disrupt your routine. It's going to, you know, disrupt all of that, your rhythm. Similarly, if, you're, if your routine gets disrupted for any reason, it's going to tend to make your life feel very complex um, and, and so on and so forth. Um, certainty, simplicity, quintessence, the quintessence, the essence of the essence, you know, the, uh, the one, you know, the one. And once again, we're talking about God. Once again, the quintessence of everything is God, you know, the, the universal cosmic spirit. Um, so, <laughs> and, you know, we have unity here on the, on the other city. So if you start to look through these and you know, read them up, you start to see that, oh, wow, all the cities are really talking about the nature of God, you know, and how we can partake in that nature as well. Um, and all the shadows are really the, the false kind of parallel reality world that humans have created. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, you know, with these different frequency levels, we can, it, you know, it becomes easier to see what is what really. Otherwise, everything's a mess. Everything's a complete mess. Um, and that's really the goal of all this, right, is to, is to retrain uh, or undo the um, the ego programming of the mind, which occurs through words um, and language. Um, so simplicity, you know, that's what you're all about, really. Simplicity. You're a simple guy. You know, you you like you like the simple life. You know, you don't like you like to be very complex. You know, or else you know. I mean, that's just not you. You know, it's uh, you like to take it easy. You know, you like to. You know, be able to relax and and watch the uh, you know evening sunset and and in peace, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, the core wound, the core wound, is next slash vocation. It turns into the vocation once we get into the pearl sequence. You see, there are two spheres. There are three spheres here. They're actually like share a double sequence. Um, so the core wound is the last of the Venus sequence. And the vocation is the beginning of the pearl sequence. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so um, the core wound is the last part of this Venus sequence that we've just gone through. And it is really where, you know, um, it's, I like to think of it as how the ego tends to express itself, um, which is uh, some kind of wounding, you know, that, um, uh, that is that is a really a, a kind of corruption of our vocation our, our true calling in life has become our core wound but we don't realize it um so by turning the core wound back into the vocation you know we can get clear about what our life's really about um so the core wound slain uh, <laughs> shame slash humor um, so the, your ego in particular likes to express itself through shame, through shame, some kind of shame, uh, you know, maybe you feel ashamed of something or, or there's all this shame, you know, I can't deal with that. I can't deal with the shame. You know, that's what, how the ego controls people by making them feel these emotions, these unbearable emotions like guilt and shame and all these things. You know, that really just makes the true self crawl inside and say, I'm not dealing with any of this, you know, <laughs> and then the ego can take over through the unconscious programming. Um, so humor, that's how you can deal with a lot of this stuff, you know, and really you have to, you know, this going through all this stuff, you know, you have to kind of make some fun of it or, or you know, have some lightheartedness to it or else. Uh, yeah, it's going to be difficult. Um, dislocation orientation unity this comes from the um unconscious mars the unconscious mars is the core wound and it, for you that's the 2.3 now the second hexagram is that i was talking about the nature nature form substance as opposed to invisible consciousness so this is about physical reality. This is about, you know, uh, solidity, form, uh, and uh, dislocation is the shadow. Uh, you know, whenever we are dislocated, 
we're in an incorrect place within the whole. You know, each of us has a correct place within the whole. Um, and that is our orientation. You know, are we oriented in the correct direction within in terms of our attitude, our beliefs uh, about ourselves, our sense of identity? Or is it totally dislocated? Are we doing something completely crazy that, you know, we should never be doing? You know, that is, um, yeah, and, and you can kind of, um, you know, think about this within yourself, maybe reflect on your different life situations and how they have unfolded and maybe think, you know, oh, well, once upon a time, you know, I, I, I was, you, maybe you're in a very, uh, a place you shouldn't have been, you know, and you knew it. You know, and, and you felt just so dislocated, you know, felt totally out of place. And then that's the shame. That's where the shame kicks in um, for you in particular. Um, you know, and, and see how that was the ego. That was all of that whole situation was came from false beliefs, uh, you know, about yourself, really. Uh, you know, and that's true for everyone. Um so dislocation, orientation, unity, unity. So this is the unity of all of existence that we're talking about here. And that's going to cure any core wounds. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's the, uh, so we can see how everything is connected through the physical form, like on that level, uh, you know, not just the theoretical. Um, so that's your vocation, right? It is the sense of unity. That's your vocation. How are we all connected? How is it all connected? You know, that is really your calling in life, you know, to find not only your own place, correct place in the whole, but to see the whole and how it's all connected. And, um, you know, this third line, the 2.3, the third line in the vocation position corresponds to strategy strategy the producer you know the producer in a hypothetical uh you know production company movie company the producer is the one who uh, coordinates you know the for example the efforts of the director the writers and the camera uh and, and you know the schedule <laughs> in particular to make sure things get on time that is requires strategy, you know, seeing how um, everything kind of connects. And yeah, um, so the strategy of unity, <laughs> the strategy of unity, how do we connect? What's the great cosmic plan? <laughs> basically, basically, that's what it's saying. Um, culture, your culture now. We go here through the path of initiative, um, and uh, you know we see that, um, and this is the pearl sequence we're on now. So vocation, culture, brand, and pearl are all the uh, pearl sequence, and this is about our uh, real life business uh, prospects and so on and so forth. Um, so the culture. So after we show some initiative to fulfilling our true life's vocation, then we are like rewarded through the proper culture, the proper setup around us, the, our right working environment. That's how I like to think of it as, you know, what is your ideal working environment um, as far as your surroundings go and also the scope of who you're working with. Um, for example, the first word here we see is the network. Um, so ideally, you're going to your work is going to involve a network of people. Uh, you're going to be working within a network, already established or not. Um, and the idea of the network um, comes from uh, the idea that there are more than, for example, three people, more than a small group, but less than a whole society. Um, and, and those are the uh, two other cultures. We've got the first line, the individual, the second line, the partnership, the third line, the unit or group, small group, 
the fourth line, the network, the fifth line, the society, and the sixth line, nature, all of nature. So the fourth line is the network. Um, oh, and by the way, sorry, the culture comes from the, uh, um, the unconscious Jupiter. The unconscious Jupiter. And Jupiter is very much about our, yeah, our, our it's, a, it's a benefic, it's the greater benefic planet, right? So it's going to give us lots of blessings and, and describe to us how our uh, overall um, life, in terms of how it interconnects with others, is going to look like. Um, so, yeah. Um, the network that comes from the fourth line of the 51.4 and the 51 is all about awakening um you know in the I Ching, the 51 is called shock shock uh and it's talking about cosmic shock in terms of it serving a specific purpose of basically freezing the ego and allowing people's true selves to emerge you know, for example, during crisis, during a crisis situation, like, uh, you know, you know, everything's going insane. Um, that's something that freezes the ego and can allow the true self to emerge because everything's crazy. No one knows what's going on. So the automated programs and responses, they don't work anymore. And, and the ego just totally shuts down. And so it's more of uh, following your heart, you know, in some crisis situation, following your true feelings and emotions, you know, so the cosmic shock has the purpose of waking someone up to something. And, um, you know, that's going to be your culture, like uh, maybe, I don't know, providing those shocks to others, you know, providing that uh, sense of awakening. Um, or it could also mean that, you like to surround yourself with that kind of energy, you know, with this energy of awakening, with this energy of shock, which is, is very powerful. It's very powerful. You know, the 51 is right here in the heart center. Um, so, you know, it's shooting straight at the self, the G center. So it's something that is going straight, really, <laughs> literally. Um, and it is uh, in the I Ching, the 51 is thunder over thunder in terms of the two trigrams. So we've got this, uh, you know, uh, very intense energy. It's the most intense energy there is. And, uh, you know, so again, that could mean either you like to work in that kind of intense environment, maybe, <laughs> or like you could be providing that kind of environment to, for example, a network of people, um, a group, you know, or a, um, yeah, a, a uh, following, you know, something like that. Agitation, initiative, awakening. The agitation, that's the shadow, right? Because we're all agitated that we're trapped in a way, you know, that's what it's like being in a prison, you know, or something like that. There's this energy there that wants to get out but it can't. And so, you know, at least this agitation. Um, but then we've got this energy of initiative, which is taking the first step and then awakening, which, you know, comes from this very intense burst of energy, the thunder over thunder, the shock, the shock, you know, sometimes it's necessary to shock someone to really wake them up, um, you know, and that does have a cosmic purpose to it. Um, the pearl. So finally we, okay. So, um, sorry, just briefly the culture, we go through the path of growth to the brand, which is the same as the life's work, right? So the 64. So after you get that culture of awakening, you know, solidified, then you're ready to uh, brand yourself appropriately. And that's going to create this energy of growth which again was the vision, the vision, the education uh, of the 64 illumination, you know? So that's how we're waking up is through this uh, massive cosmic illumination that's happening, you know? And, you know, hey guys, you know, you can come see, you know, this is how it all works out. This is the vision. Um, this is the cosmic plan, guys, you know? Um, 
And then we go back down through the path of service to go back to the core wound, um, which was the, um, the unconscious Mars, the two, the two. So we go back to the path of service to, um, which means you're providing some energy as a service for a purpose, what purpose of unity, uniting people. Um, and so that, you know, and then we go to the quantum. So after those three, it kind of like, you know, activates and from all three of the pearl spheres, uh, sorry, yeah, the pearl, it is the pearl sequence after all, we get to the pearl itself, which is kind of like this great cosmic gift, which uh, we, and it also happens to be the one thing we really want more than anything else. <laughs> but um, and it seems like the thing that we need more than anything else to help us in our life. And it's the thing that we will indeed receive when everything is in alignment. That's what all this is about, alignment. Um, so the pearl for you is going, and by the way, that's going to be the 42.4 for you. The, um, the pearl is the conscious Jupiter. So this is a conscious thing that we're going to receive and that in a way is the deepest part of our being the original seed really of who we are um because remember in a way we're going through this backwards you know the sun the life's work really is in a way the last thing to be created in us and in a way the pearl is the first thing uh even though we're talking about it last so because it's the deepest it's the deepest part really it, it, it's it's very packed away, you know, within all these other spheres, the pearl is. And uh, so for you, that's the 42.4. And the 42 in the I Ching is called increase, increase. So this is the energy of growth. This is the energy of progress, of, um, yeah, uh, of, of getting material rewards, of getting material uh, and conscious uh, accumulation of resources of energy of you know good ideas and thoughts and increasing 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 and really all parts of the cosmic whole according to the I Ching, are geared towards increasing the whole um and in fact the previous hexagram is called uh decrease the 41 41 is decrease 42 is increase and uh, it says in the cosmic I Ching that the 41 decrease, the only purpose of decrease is decreasing the ego in humans. And, uh, you know, otherwise there is no decrease. There is none. Like, you know, nothing ever decreases. There is never any loss. Never. It's only because of the ego that anything is ever lost or thought to be lost. Um, so when we're talking about decreasing something, it's only about decreasing the ego, which increases everything else. Um, so this increase is, uh, you know, that pearl, what you will receive, what you are going to give out to others uh, as kind of this deepest part of your being. And charity, it's charity. That's the fourth line. Um, and, you know, the fourth line is very focused on community and family and helping, uh, you know, uh, on a very, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one type of level, you know, uh, interacting with small groups of people or one or two other people, charity. So it's almost like, yeah, you're, you've reached the point where you're donating, not donating for no value, but, you know, you're giving something uh, that you don't necessarily have to. That's the idea and that it makes you feel um, complete to do so. Um, and it also means that you're probably going to receive a lot. You're going to receive a lot so that that can be a possibility. Um, and yeah, it feels good. It feels good to, to show true charity, you know, because it's a voluntary thing and it's not something you have to do. And, uh, you know, it's not a grandiosity or a magnificence, but, you know, it just simply how things naturally interact and what makes you feel complete within yourself and we've got the 42 words expectation detachment celebration so really at the end of the day it's all about the celebration for you the celebration of life 
and uh, you know how much um, good that you have received or will receive, and, and then how good it feels to be able to transmit that you know to others in a way, and uh, getting rid of the expectations. Really, the expectation is the shadow. Uh, because it again, it creates this kind of spell, this kind of fence around our thoughts. Where if we expect something to happen a certain way, then it will, you know, then it will. But was that correct or not? Probably not, because our own thoughts are so limited. In, in that, it, so if we have these great expectations about something, yeah, they may come true, but is that really going to be what we want? Probably not. You know, because so few of us really know ourselves. Um, yeah, so uh, that's the golden path. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions about any of that. That was a lot. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, in those, in those books in particular, it's really the only place you'll find more details on these particular words that I'm using here. Because they all come from those three books, actually. You know, like the teacher being associated with the life's work that comes from one of those books. Um, you know, the radiance being marriage that comes from one of those books. And he's got long explanations of everything and why that is that, you know, I couldn't possibly cover in a reading like this. So, yeah, I highly recommend you like go through those three books, actually. Yeah. Now that you mention it, you know, that is something I do recommend you do. Uh, you know, just go off every one of your, um, you know, things here and, and look them up in the books. They're called the same things. Like, you know, your life's work will be called the life's work in, in the, I think the green one, the activation sequence, the first one. And uh, yeah, you can look up exactly what all he says about, you know, the six line teacher. Um, you know, so that could give you a lot more insights as well. Yeah, and you know, it, it really takes some contemplation on all this, right, before you really start to get it and you really start to feel the truth of it, um, you know, with and, and you know, it takes time for, you know, to kind of, um, yeah, to get this kind of sense of, um, I don't know, certainty that, hey, this is really true, you know, and, and so what does that mean? What does that mean for my life and how I should live it? And and then you start gradually, you know, changing little things here and there about how you're behaving or, or what you're thinking. And gradually, little by little, you know, as the nature of your thoughts change, so does the nature of your manifestation, like what's actually happening in your life. And, uh, you know, the habitual nature of our thoughts determines what happens in our reality uh, for each of us individually. And, and so um, this is tremendous, can be tremendously valuable for you because it can, it can point you in the right direction um, in your life overall. It, it can kind of reset your invisible mental picture of yourself and, and, and align it correctly, which then actually aligns your real physical body in life as well. Um, you know, and, and by, by, by simply knowing, um, the four corners, the activation sequence, the life's work, evolution, radiance, and purpose, you know, also your incarnation cross by seeing, you know, you can kind of check inwardly if, okay, well, if I make this decision, is that aligned with what I believe my destiny to be or is it going to take me away from that you know and it's going to generally be one or the other for every single decision we make um and so I, you know i think you'll notice over time as you uh, start to process more and more of this how you get more and more things coming into your life which are aligned with that true destiny and then you start to really see, wow, you know, like I've really been living a completely false life or at least up to a certain point, you know, and we all have, we all have. Um, 
and, and then you start to see, wow, you know, like this is really something. Um, <laughs> I noticed that I noticed when I was making this that you were born in 1964 as well, you know, which is the same as the as your personality son, the 64, you know, so that's very interesting to me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it makes sense, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, you can, and then, you know, just by knowing and feeling that, then you can start to unravel more things about yourself, like, you know, why, why do I tend to, you know, be this kind of producer archetype, you know, and what does that, you know, say, about, and how does that, how is that going to chain or influence my ideal interactions with people, you know, and, and, yeah, you, you'll just start to discover more and more things with all this. So, um, yeah, and you've got if you got any more questions, um, uh, yeah, just feel free to ask them. Um, I do have to run here in a moment, but um, yeah, just anything else. I don't know. No, and you know they're not really included on this either. Like for example. Uh, You've got the Chiron in 13, but, you know, you don't have anything on the 13 uh, because they don't activate the gates. Uh, I just honestly, I just put them there in case anyone was interested. I guess I should make that a bit clearer. But, you know, um, they, so they don't activate the gates, but they can tell you something. For example, the Chiron is about where we're wounded, you know, and, uh, you know, where we uh, are going to have an opportunity in the lot in our life to uh, kind of heal that wound. So something to do with the 13, it, you know, it's where you're wounded and how you're going to heal. It. So the 13 is called, um, you know, the fellowship of man, you know, or associating with people, associating with people. Um, and, uh, you know, the 13.1 in particular is like the listener. It's the listener. So, you know, maybe at some point in your life, you know, you feel like maybe you need to have been a better listener. Maybe there's some kind of issue with that. Like maybe if you'd only listened more, you know, something, something or something, you know, wouldn't have happened or would have happened, whatever, you know, uh, that is what that is really you can get from that. That's what you can get from that. Um, so the 13.1, um, uh, you know, it's called associating with people. So associating with the right people and according to the I Ching you know the only rule or not it's not a rule but the only guideline according to the cosmos is that there's no relationship with the ego with the ego which is that incorrectness incorrect mental kind of you know uh yeah just negativity really that um yeah so maybe there's been some I don't know, maybe there's been some experience in your life with some kind of ego, you know, and, and, it, and it creates some kind of wound, you know, and, and so this is going to, you're going to have a chance to heal that at some point. <laughs> and also, yeah, the Black Moon Lilith uh, is about repressed sexuality, repressed sexuality. Um, and really our entire sexuality as a whole species has been suppressed, but this is individually, you know, and it can even seem like almost uh, kind of dark. It can seem kind of dark, you know, that's why it's called the black moon Lilith, you know, because it's like, oh, well, maybe this is something I would like, but it's like, I don't know. It's, I feel like for some reason it's, I don't know, wrong, even though it's not, you know, you may, maybe you've been made to believe that it's, you know, wrong or, or whatnot. So the 14.5, what is that? Possession in great measure. Possession in great measure. Basically, uh, yeah, the 14 you see here coming from the sacral is right in the middle. So it's kind of like, you know, pointing directly upwards from the middle of that region. Um, you know, so possession in great measure. It, it is, the 14 is more than any other gate associated probably with you know, the sexual life force and, um, uh, and how that, and, 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 uh, you know, feeling, uh, you know, not only okay, but great at expressing that, you know, so maybe, yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe there's some issue with that. Maybe it seems like, I mean, we all have been conditioned to like kind of attach s uh, to associate sin with sexuality 
You know, we all have. Um, but, you know, everyone's sexuality is unique. And, 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 you know, we shouldn't feel bad about expressing ourselves in that way, you know, but which, which we do. So, yeah. That's <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, I'll send you the uh, recording uh, here in a minute. And um, let's see, was there anything else I wanted to say to you, Scott? Yeah, Scott, I just wanted to say that, yeah, man, I, you know, I, I read a lot of these charts and um, I have to say, you know, your chart and your overall demeanor and, and character, I feel like you you really have a lot of potential to like, um, you know, to, to teach people to, um, you know, and, and the world needs people like you. I feel like, you know, people who are into this kind of esoteric stuff, but nevertheless, uh, relatable, not totally crazy, you know, and, and who can, uh, have that, you know, kind of nice guy, uh, face that, you know, people just want to, uh, are, they feel great listening to them. You know, they feel like they can trust you and they feel like you're reliable and, and you're also got the correct information. So I just wanted to end with encouraging you to, uh, yeah, really dive into this more, man, and, uh, see where it uh, takes you. <laughs>